Hi everybody, this is Denise from Something Beautiful Handcrafts and welcome to another studio vlog. Um, in all honesty, I recorded the studio vlog um, probably about three weeks ago and I am so like really self-conscious um, that I generally just record things over and over and over again until I get what I want. So never got that published and I decided I would just go ahead and do a new one. And I want to try to keep them like 20 minutes or less. Um, so, I'm probably going to break this up in segments. So, let's get started. Uh, I have been in the process of learning to use the New Zealand Auto Knitter or the NZAC, as I like to call it, um, which is a sock, circular sock knitting machine. So, I actually did complete the videos to show the process of making one whole sock. And I am slowly uploading those videos. So the first one is there, and then I'm going to go ahead and upload the one for making the heel, uh, the foot, and the toe. Try to get those completed as soon as possible. Uploading takes a lot of time and patience. So at any rate, I'm going to show you the socks I have made since it arrived in June, or the socks I made for myself because there are more pairs that I've made for other people that are already gone. Okay, so this is uh, one of my favorite pairs. And I've been calling this on social media the, the Rubik's Cube sock. And this is, what is this? African Sunset or something like that. African something. Um, it's a active sock. And I think it's from Super Garn, Super Guard. I'm not quite sure how to say that. But at any rate, um, here's the thing about this sock. I have this thing about matching. I really like to have matching socks. And there are people who don't really feel that matching is important. And that I understand if they feel that way. But I have this thing about colors being too busy. There's certain colors that I don't find visually appealing. Certain colors that are too visually stimulating for me. And when there's a lot of different colors and patterns I find it like really busy for my eyes and very distracting and sometimes a little painful so when there's a pattern that is quite as busy as this sock is I really prefer for them to match that's my own personal preference so just putting that out there I'm gonna make socks I'm gonna match if you say to me oh don't worry about matching socks um, that's my personal preference so that's how I'm gonna do it so this sock right here, uh, if you saw my Instagram post, it matches almost completely perfectly to a T. You, you could not even really differentiate one sock from the other. I mean, they are pretty much like lined up. Look how close that is lined up. Uh, and the only place, there's a tiny place where you can tell that it's just a little different by a row or two. And I'm not even going to tell you what it is because unless you're really staring at the sock, you're not going to know. And basically what I did is I cranked this tube once and I counted the repeats where you're going to see that motif, motif repeat. And um, I put a mark in it. So that I knew that if I cranked 200 something um, rows, that I would reach a point where uh, I would come back up to this pattern. So after I did the crank the first one, I pulled out so many yards to match those rows. And then when I could clearly see that this was the next in line, I you know, used the yarn again and cranked out the other sock. Like I said, it may be too much work for some people. That depends on how you feel about socks. Hey, if you don't need matching socks, don't worry about it. If you do need matching socks, go for it. Okay. In general, though, um, this yarn is pretty. It is very busy for me. Uh, I really appreciate uh, the person that sent it to me. Uh, but this would not be a sock that I would buy a yarn I would buy for myself in general because the pattern would be too busy for me. But it still is a really cool sock, but and it really does remind me of trying to 
match up the squares on the Rubik's Cube. And as a running joke, we said I should dye Rubik's Cube socks and challenge someone to line them up. That would be so funny. Okay, so let's put these. These socks were sent to me uh, by the previous owner of the machine. She made them for me. They are so cool. Okay, now this right here, this is an ice yarn. And, oh, where's your match at? Oh, I see you. This is an ice yarn. Uh, ice yarns are sold in Turkey. They're pretty decent yarns. They're heart wearing. Um, I like the heart wearing socks. It's not super soft, which is cool. I think it'll wear better. My feet don't mind the difference. And uh, they're pretty well matched up too, but it's only a few color changes on here so it's not that hard not like the Rubik's Cube socks were to match up this is a long sock those two were long socks and actually uh, the Super Garn uh, I probably should get my sock book out so I could be exact if anybody wants me to be exact you can always just ask in the comments and I will tell you exactly because I keep a sock book and so I know exactly um, how long the ball was how many yards it was how long um, I cranked the socks how many rows were for each one for every little space so I could tell you that uh, but this is a long sock maybe this is 90 it may be 100 and um, 300 yards 350 something like that I like nice long socks I pretty much wear skirts only so I like a nice long sock as long as possible this is another ice yarn you know, with the ice yarns don't have names like the uh, active socks do. Um, so they're just like ice yarn, um, wool, blend. So I couldn't even tell you how to go to the um, ice website and find a particular color. You just would have to go into the sock yarn, go into the fiber type and try to figure out, you know, where this yarn is. Okay, this is a nice, I have a preference for blues, so although it's striped in a couple different blues, um, blue is one of those colors, I just like stripes and shades, so we're good with blue. Not very busy. And a third ice yarn. Purple is, this one did not match up. Um, when I did it something about the ball and so it's not quite matched but I don't this one is not so bad for me because you can see that the colors are like they're pretty close colors to each other so it's, even though they don't match up it doesn't give me that busy multi colored feel that uh, like the super garn one was the active one would be if it was not matched up completely. So we're good with that. This one is a uh, Patton, or should I say Peyton? You know, I really don't know. Um, right here, this is a cotton blend yarn. Pink and gray, I love pink and gray. I don't know, let me pull it back away from the camera. I'm getting a little bit of glare a lot of glare off this one so I'm not I don't really think you're seeing the pink and gray as well as I would like oh there, there we go that's kind of better oh there we go that's much better uh, this one was one I did before I learned how to do the heels and toe so this heel is closed by hand with a Kitchener stitch on two needles and the top is ribbed by hand with a pico edge by hand okay now those are the super garn socks now of course as you know i die aha and uh, it was only a, a matter of time before i dyed my own socks for the machine 
and I had a little bit of a problem with that uh, because of the pandemic, mostly I assume. Um, there is, there aren't, um, I'm trying to think of what I want to say. Some of the suppliers are having a harder time getting their supply of sock yarn, undyed sock yarns. Um, a lot of those supplies come from South America or places like that. And with the shutdowns, they just don't really have the supply yet. So I went looking in places trying to find this undyed yarn. And uh, the second thing is that I really don't have the funds to, to buy a lot in bulk. So there were some places that would have the supply of undyed yarn, but you have to have like a wholesaler account to buy the yarn. And uh, uh, not really, I'm not really, you know, kind of doing that kind of business to get a wholesale account. So I had narrowed it down to a few choices and I chose the uh, Dyer Supply yarn. And it was a merino base yarn. <sighs> I have issues with merino sock yarn um, for several different reasons. But it was either that or the undyed patents at Joann's. And I uh, got some issues with that too. So I did order the merino yarn just because I have issues with merino yarn doesn't mean everybody else does I would have rather have had the other different types of wool and so for my next order of undyed sock yarn um, I won't get that particular blend I'll get it somewhere else but okay so let me just stop there okay so Okay, this is just a random skein of um, wool dyed yarn. This is, um, what is this? Bird of Paradise. Okay, anyway, so this is the Patents, 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 I don't know, sock yarn. It's just wool. I assume it's like a Peruvian high, uh, Highland wool. It, it doesn't say whose wool it is, it's just the miscellaneous wool. And uh, I think I called this one Goody Goody Gumdrop. And I was having a hard time really showing the depth of color and the pictures that I put on Instagram. But actually, you're getting a pretty good idea from the video, the different colors in it. Uh, although the red, there are some reds on here that are darker than they appear on the camera. So it's kind of like a red hot Jolly Rancher depth of darkness for the darkest red. But the other colors are pretty accurate. And then the same wool and this is like sunflower, browns and yellow golds. That This right here is just waste yarn from the machine at the top. Now, these are 166 yards each skein, so two skeins make a full sock. Same here, 166, two of these blanks to make a sock. I, I tried the blanks. I have some merino ones too, I'll show you. And I actually found that I didn't like uh, dyeing the sock blanks as much as I enjoy just dyeing in the crock pot the way I normally dye. I, I much prefer that and I like the way the sock comes out and I'll show you. Now this is one of the merinos. It's like a cotton candy type pink. It's kinky because it used to be a sock blank. Okay. Oh, and now I'm looking and the sock is not inside of the bag. Okay, so I'm going to pause here. I'm going to go and get the sock because you really need to see the sock for this next yarn. 
Okay, so it looks like um, this battery is going to die soon in this phone. And uh, I'm going to show you the other Merino sock yarns. Okay, this one. Okay, there we go. I'm going to have to figure out this light. Like before there was too much light, now there was not enough light, now there's too much light again. And, uh, oh, there you go. That's a good one. This is just like really light color. It's really speckled. It's just really plain, kind of purple. Uh, and it's in my Etsy shop. Uh, actually, all these are going to be in my Etsy shop. So you can just, if you want to see a better picture of it, you can go to the Etsy shop and see it. Uh, this one is a darker purple. Splotchy. It hasn't been cranked. Okay, there we go. That's a really good view of it. It's a little darker, though it's darker than what's in the picture. Go to, to the Etsy page, have a look at it. It's going to crank out a nice speckle, and I will uh, show you an example like this one here was dark and splotchy like that, and that's how it turned out after it was cranked. So these solid ones with, with the speckles are just are gonna turn out to be kind of speckled socks. It's a nice sock. Nice merino, if you like merino socks. Okay, so now I uh, just wanna put this in here. And like, where did the other sock go? Okay, before I talk about the merino socks, I need to show you these ones too because they kind of coincide together. Okay, so this is a white alpaca sock. And the yarn came from a wonderful lady in um, Pennsylvania. This sock is maybe a little heavy fingering, kind of sport weight. Sport weight. It is a really nice, heavy sock. And I don't remember offhand the percentage of nylon in it, but I'm going to work with her with dyeing these yarns for uh, custom sock making. So I will tell you more about this particular sock blend later. I uh, just wanted to introduce it because the colorway I'm going to show you in the Merino, um, I used it in the alpaca. So I've got a few more minutes of battery to talk about that. I'm going to turn the camera off adjust the lighting so this you can see this really well and then um, show you this other merino and I'll pack it. Okay so here I am back again. The picture's a little more grainy but actually although the background is brighter you can see the colors. Okay see that's much better. You can see the colors in my foreground a lot better now. So now you have a much better idea of what this looks like. And like I said, it just looks like kind of splotchy purple. And you're like, well, how is that going to crank up? When you crank it, you're going to get like a pattern out of the purple. So it's, it won't just be like this splotchy solid sock like you see it'll crank up into something totally different or if you're hand knitting it'll knit up into something totally different kind of like purple speckles okay so uh, this right here is my latest colorway well with the goody gum drop and this is called earth and sky and what it's supposed to represent is the blue sky with a little bit of gold but you kind of see that little bit of yellowish gold in there. And then um, the green earth, which is over here. And I may make a darker green earth. I don't know. And then there's a blue and reflective purple um, in the sky and in the water. Earth and sky. This has like become my new favorite thing. And this is the merino base. And so... Uh, this is going into my Etsy store with the other sock yarns. Uh, I And so I was sent a test sample of the alpaca. 
and what the plan is is to um, have a multicolored foot with the heel toe toe heel and toe and cuff as a solid color so i decided to run the alpaca as my test sample of earth and sky so you you have a really good idea of how the earth and sky let me put it to you is going to knit up now of course as always with any colorway there's going to be a variation so you might not get like the perfect you know knit up like this there's a variation in um in commercial yarn there's definitely variations in hand dyed yarn but the one thing i do like about these variegations that are like this is that you don't really worry too much about matching up a sock because they just kind of fall where they may and they look pretty much the same so here's the other sock that's much better um, on the alpaca base it really looks nice because it, it's got a little bit of shine to it from the alpaca you know and I, I just really like how it takes up the dye I probably want to say that the merino is just a little more muted uh, than the alpaca is in this case but it just gives you a feel for uh, wherever the skein went off to. Okay, that just gives you a good feel for what this skein is going to look like when it's knit into whatever it's going to be knit into. Okay, and last but not least, um, the sock machine is like just not for socks. Um, people make scarves, hats, uh, mittens, fingerless gloves, um, what kind of, you know, other things. You can also knit flat panels and it's possible to make uh, sweaters and things on it depending on the size um, of the pieces. So in my case, of course, I have this particular obsession with fingerless gloves and uh, wristlets and wrist warmers and leg warmers and all that kind of stuff. So I'm working on a wrist warmer as well. This is my hand spun, ooh, fin wool. Yes, this is fin wool. And uh, currently, this is a Pico hung hem. And these are uh, tease water locks. So I'm probably going to increase the length by like another three inches. And these are just kind of, just kind of cool to wear okay so basically um, that's what I'm working on for the next you know few weeks or whatever I'm really going to put a lot of effort into dyeing a lot of sock yarn um, I would say I'm, I'm not really putting an emphasis on selling things but with the way things are going I just really need to put some more emphasis on making um, this like a, a viable or, or at least making the hobby take care of itself um, so that I can free up any other funds to do the things that I need to do, you know, just live or I really need to get a different, a new car, I always have to feed those dogs. So um, I don't want to turn my videos or studio vlogs into like commercials to like buy my sock yarn buy my stuff but i am going to probably spend a little more time introducing um whatever it is i'm creating for my etsy store and it i may actually start having separate videos just for that i don't know i'm just tossing up some ideas but at any rate thanks for watching i appreciate you watching my studio vlogs um, I appreciate, you know, any social media followings or, you know, just looking at the Etsy store is a really great thing. If you have any questions, you can go ahead and drop those in the comments. I'd be happy to ask them. If there's anything that you want to know or a video that you want to make, um, just let me know. I'm, I'm pretty much open to uh, a lot of ideas. Thank you, everybody. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed and have a great day.